It's the final of the Grand Chess Tour and four players have qualified. In one semi-final we have Levon Aronin against Ding Li Ren and in the other semi-final we have Magnus Carlsen against Maxime Vachier Le Grave. So the players play two classical games and then if it's drawn then we go into rapids and so on. But anyway, we've got two semi-finals as usual. And uh, I'm going to take a look at the first round game between Magnus Carlsen and Maxime Vachier Le Grave. Very exciting Nidorf. Both players really going for it in this game. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And if you want to support us, we'd be very grateful. Do check out patreon.com powerplaychess or you can make a one-off donation via PayPal. Right, here we go. Carlsen, interestingly, going in for... An open Sicilian, not afraid to take on the Nidor variation. Of course, Maxime is a real, ex a great expert in the Nidorf. And Magnus goes for Bishop G5. So this is the acid test of the Nidorf. Now, of course, Maxime knows this stuff backwards. So what did Magnus have in mind? Surely not one of the main lines where... Maxime knows his stuff. No, Magnus went for f3. Now that is unusual, very unusual. So it's potentially setting up a kind of English attack with g4. Well, Maxime thought for some minutes here and played the pawn to h6, putting the question to the bishop. Now that means if the bishop comes to h4, then there's a nice little move, simple developing move, bishop e7. And actually already black is threatening this move, knight takes e4, um, typical trick in, well, many different openings, but particularly this um, Sicilian kind of position. Well, Magnus, without hesitation, put the bishop back on e3. And now we have a strange transposition into a normal um, English attack where black has this extra tempo of a move with the pawn on h6. Now, is that to black's benefit or not? It's very hard to say. Because sometimes, of course, white can open up the position with g4 and g5. But yeah, it's really hard. So, of course, Maxime is a real expert in these lines, but you know, he, he was sort of, you know, wasn't exactly sure what to do. So he played b5. a3 prevents the pawn advancing again. And Maxime just develops in typical uh, Sicilian style. Um, at the moment, that bishop not doing too much against that pawn on e4, but it does perhaps start to introduce the idea of d5. There's a lot of firepower on the d5 square. Now this is a really intriguing moment. Uh, you know, black could just play with rook c8, maybe bishop e7, all, all the usual Sicilian moves. But Maxime goes for h5. Now that's a very pragmatic move. So this extra tempo of the pawn on h6 has now gone because that pawn has gone to h5 in two moves. So we're back in a kind of normalish position where black has taken, well, quite a, a compromising move actually, h5, in preventing white's plan with g4. Uh, compromising because, of course, it does weaken black's king side. Gives away the g5 square. It means that although g4 has been prevented for the time being, if white ever does get this move in successfully, then it could be even more effective because lines will open quite quickly. So let's see how things develop. Carlson nudges to the side and then plays queen e1. Slightly mysterious move, but when d5 comes, then the queen can be very useful on e1 opposite the king. 
Um, we'll see more on that in a moment. And sometimes the Queen can bounce out to g3 as well. But I think it's more directed against black playing d5. And Carlson admitting, admitted afterwards that this, the position was not so easy to play, said Magnus after the game. I think, you know, Maxime is playing pretty standard moves, but for Carlson already, I think it's a little bit uncomfortable, actually. So, uh, Carlson played rook g1, which looks a little bit strange because g4 certainly isn't on in this position. Black would just take it and actually wreck white's pawn structure. Queen c7. So, what is the idea behind rook g1? Well, it's a very clever idea. Uh, just hang on. So, queen c7 again, another very normal move. Looks absolutely right to take the queen away from the line of the rook. Now almost half an hour went into g3. I mean white has to be careful about trying to arrange g4. If you play h3, well apart from whatever's going on on the queen side, you know, it could be that in some cases black can simply play h4 to just cripple those kingside pawns because g4 well, that would just be taken. Um, let's go back. So Carlson played g3, but there's there's more to this than just um, getting g4 going eventually, as we're about to see. And here's a critical moment. See, Black is already thinking about breaking with d5 in you know all these positions, which will open up this bishop's diagonal, and and Black can starts a really very dangerous initiative on the king side. Queen side, rather. There's a king on the queen side. That's what got me confused. Um, so, for example, d5 has to be considered in this position. If black gets it in, uh, successfully it'll open everything up beautifully. But bishop f4 was Carlson's intention. And he didn't really know what was going on here, but, well, it just blows up completely now. You know, if this is taken, we've we've got a, a knight f5 coming, uh, and Black could play like this. And Carlson thought the bishop h3 was, and 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 he said, well, who knows what's happening? You know, he wasn't sure. Um, but rook g2 is also very interesting to cover the c2 square. And after this, play knight f5 and. This is anyone's game, it really is. It's incredibly complex. But you can see the point of playing queen e1. It's directed against black's king, which is still in the middle. So let's come back. Well, I think very understandably, uh, Vasily Legrav just thought that was too wild. Very hard to control those positions. Instead, plays a, a normal Sicilian move, putting the knight to e5 looking to come in to, of course, the c4 square. And if h3 now, then d5 is very powerful. Well, at least it, it's a very random position, to be honest, but it's not exactly what um, white wants. But Carlson played, I think, a very good move here. I mean, an unusual move for the Sicilian. Rook g2. Very strange, blocking that bishop. He's been playing too much Fisher random chess. That's what it looks like. But actually, it makes a lot of sense because the rook covers the c2 pawn. And, well, it, it makes it possible to challenge in the centre or, or, or take here, as we'll see. Okay, so Vachel Le Grave decides to castle. And now h3. So Carlson is potentially getting ready for g4. Feels quite slow, but let's see. d5. So this is the big break. It's it's impossible for White to stop this, but Carlson at least has made measures to control this break. So f4. 
And the knight comes in at e5. <clears throat> and Vashir de Grave took. And then knight e4. You don't want to go backwards. Let's go in. And this was exchanged off. And the rook slides over to e2. So basically Carlson is intending playing bishop g2 to collect that pawn. Which can't really be defended by normal means. However, it takes a couple of moves for white to do that. So in the meantime, Maxime has to try and stir up as much trouble in the centre and on the queen side. And there are certain you know, tactical elements here that actually make things okay for black. In fact, I mean, the move that um, <clears throat> Vashirogarv played bishop d5 is certainly not a bad move at all. He could also play b4 in this position. And here, well, at first glance, it looks as though this is <clears throat> quite pretty good for white. But actually, after this, now that's a very annoying pin. Split rooks, there you go. That rook on d1 is on prees. Compare with black's rooks, picture of harmony. In fact, white is still okay here if he plays c3 and rook c2. But bishop takes e4 is actually very good for black after this. Queen b6, very simple move. That's actually the move that Carlson missed. He admitted after the game. That pin is really, really nasty. And black also threatens bishop c3. Or, yeah, bishop c3 is it's actually a crushing move. Um, so getting in on the b-file... And after this, well, let's just play there and exploit the pin both ways here. And if c3, queen a5, black is just crawling in here. You know, there's, there's a threat of just taking on c3 and, and just breaking through. Must be winning for black. So, But white should be okay there, but it's tricky. Very tricky. Certainly Carlson would have to make some, some exact moves. Let's go back. Instead of that... Bishop d5, also very interesting. And Vasha Lugav had prepared queen c4 here. So it's his turn to, to get in. And it is very, very dangerous. So if b3, stopping that, then just queen c3. And that's on prees. There's potential to, you know, looking at the third rank. Difficult position for white. So knight b3 was played to block the diagonal. And now bishop c5. So just trying to expel the queen. And it's, it's actually starting to feel a bit unpleasant. Carson has to take that. And now Vashilograv decided to check on a2. He could have played rook takes. Probably he was worried about this endgame. But in fact, black should have enough compensation here. But I can understand why he didn't really want to go in for this, but instead preferred to keep activity and keep the pressure on Carlson. Because why it Well... I was going to say white is on the edge. Both sides are on the edge here. At the moment, Vachy Le Grave is a piece down. But Carlson's king is in mortal danger. Now, what's going on? Well, first of all, if black's queen keeps checking, then actually the king just bounces out and escapes to the other side of the board. Then it's looking safe once it comes to f2, surrounded by white's pieces. So let's come back here. So instead of chasing the king, rook d8. So, well, the, the intention is clear. Once that bishop moves, then queen a1 will be mate. Very dangerous. But Carson had prepared this extraordinary move. Pawn to c4. An amazing move. And he said after the game that he thought c4 was just winning. And Vachel Le Grave admitted that he had missed c4 coming into this position. Um, now, what happens? Well, if bishop takes, 
then white can simply exchange and play rook d2. So the point of c4 was to give the king a square on c2. So after the check, it just bounces up and everything's fine. Fashilograv took with the pawn instead. So he's holding his position together. And now another really big moment in the game. And this is where Carlson played rook e d2. A lot of people were thinking that knight a4 could be the move. Now, if that knight can sit on c3 and close out black's pieces, then looks looks very good for white. Now, there's a couple of moves. c3 is fascinating. It feels natural to open up lines, but actually this works out in white's favour. Um, although black can chase like crazy, in fact, white's king remarkably just runs up the board and, well, both Carlson analysed this. Um, I mean, both sides saw roughly roughly this, and this is winning for White, but there was something else that he, he wasn't quite satisfied about. Um, and in fact, black is okay here, but not c3. In fact, bishop c6 is a very good move. So let's just see this. So threat, well, a few threats. <laughs> That's on prees, and of course, a queen check to take that rook. So white exchanges here and puts the knight back, which first glance looks pretty good. For white, you know, white's got that blockade. But watch what happens if king c2, bishop a4 actually forces checkmate on b3. There you go, that is dangerous. So after queen a1, knight b1 force. Now, this is just a completely unclear position because black is so active. White is going back and c3, black's initiative continues. Now, both sides are actually okay here. Um, it the, the line's gone for a very long time. It's um, but basically, the computer thinks that it, it's it's balanced, um, but it takes a long time to show that. But basically, I think let's just turn back to Carlson's judgment. You know, he could see things like this happening, and basically, you know, his sense of danger told him, "Don't go there." And I think he was right because although that might, you know, be even, you know, if if you're a computer, you might think that's that's uh, balanced chances or whatever. But for humans, that is so difficult to play with white under pressure. No, not Carlson's thing. He hates to lose the initiative. So rook d2 played by Carlson, and now it's. Vashilogarv's turn to think, you know, what? how much can I get out of this position? He could take this. So now he's a whole rook down and keep playing for the attack. In fact, he might be okay here. Um, but, well, in this kind of position, it, basically the, the queen comes in and, and black is okay here. Um, it should lead to a, a draw. Um, by perpetual, but I can sort of understand why Maxime didn't want to do that. He uh, he went for queen a1. It's it's more secure, and just repeated the position. And now, if Carson wants to play, for example, knight e4, then I mean that's dreadful. That allows the bishop in here. You can see it's incredibly dangerous. Or well, let's just make a random move on the other side of the board, and see what Black's threat is. In fact. You know, rook b1 is incredibly strong. And then this move, rook b3. And if that gets taken, well, it's pretty dire. Let, let's go to the end. We like a checkmate here. And queen c4 mate. Not completely forced, but you get the drift. If white isn't careful, he's in trouble. So Carlson just... Nudge the king back, and well, rook b8 in this case, bishop b4, and actually white is okay. So basically, another check the king bounced up, queen came back, 
and here well they're about to repeat moves and they agreed a draw great fighting chess from both players i think excellent and you you could quibble with some of the moves but basically it was a really accurate game i love the fighting spirit um just a really really interesting struggle after the game carlson said i'm quite confused um, and uh, Vashilagov said it was a fun game to play but we both missed things well they might have both missed a few little details but actually for both of them I thought their judgment was excellent in this game so more coming up from the London Chess Classic and the Grand Chess Tour Finals over the next few days thanks for watching